everyone, hello Facebook, it's Liz again. How are you doing today? I'm just getting my little tutorial ready for everyone. Um, I wanna show you on my computer what we're gonna be working on today. But before I get started, I'm gonna give everyone a chance to jump on and say hello. So when you hop on, say hello, let me know where you're joining from. Um, I'm here in Florida, as you know, and it is super hot and humid. These last few days it's been storming and thundering and um, we get all kinds of storms in the uh, in the summer so that's what we're dealing with okay so I keep getting a notification to turn on my live okay there's my friend hi Mary I keep getting these notifications but then when I once I see your comments pop up I know um, that we're good and you can see me okay so great everybody's starting to join there's my friend Melanie from Louisiana hi Melanie good to see you and Mary from West Virginia and there's Robin from New York hi Robin how is it in New York and New Jersey um, so we're all on the East Coast so I bet it's kind of similar humid right <laughs> probably not as humid as here but probably a little humid so while everybody's jumping on there's Debbie from Indiana hi Debbie and Thelma from Washington can everyone hear me okay I've got my mic on hopefully I'm all good today and there's Donna from Mississippi good I got a thumbs up and Priscilla from Georgia um, camp from camp a oh Colorado and you know what I forgot my glasses but i think my husband will probably bring me my glasses and uh there's another friend from florida and there is okay hi i'm in ireland yes there you are in ireland it's cooler and i know i talked to you last time and you said it was cooler in ireland and i'm a little jealous hey francis hot and humid there too as it is here <laughs> okay everyone's popping on let me show you what we're going to work on today uh before i just chat the whole hour away <laughs> so here is the um granny square thank you the waterfall granny square this is i am going to show it to you on my computer so you can get a good look at the colors and i don't have the actual booklet i just have the digital copy so i want to and you know that's just prints in black and white so i just want to show you um here's the book okay so this is a booklet and as you can see it's a quilt and it comes with 20 different squares and it's got this really fun technique called waterfall crochet so it gives you um, every single square, the instructions with lots and lots of pictures, every single square, lots of tips and tricks, but I'm gonna show you how to do the waterfall. It's different um, than what you might be used to, but I figured it out. So if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. And then at the end, they just show you um, all the squares. So this is where all your squares are gonna make. Aren't those pretty? They look like like tiles almost aren't those gorgeous i love these um and then they show you how to seam it all together so all, everything's in the booklet if you want to make this cool quilt and um, we put a link i put a link in the description of where you can get the booklet over on annie's of course so that's what we're going to work on today um, I wanted to show you my fun little thing that I got here. <laughs> this is my yarn in. And so this is good if you have like some leftover yarn, you can just sort of ball it up and put it in this guy and then it rolls through here like this. So when you're working, it doesn't roll off onto the floor, which that happens to me a lot too. You probably won't use like one of these because they come out in the middle, but you know if you have ones that's in a ball or um, like thread you know how when you work with thread it comes from the outside so that's fun for that too so I'm gonna show you on one of my squares and that says hamster ball <laughs> it does look like that <laughs> it does look like a hamster ball but see I have this coral in here I'm gonna show you you just pop this little thing here and open that up I'm looking at myself on the camera <laughs> here and there you go and you take that guy out so we're not going to use the coral today we're going to use this beige and I just have a little ball in here and then I just put that guy in there and it goes right through the, uh, the opening like that see super fun and easy and then you can take it with you wherever you go so here is the start <laughs> of still waiting on the, the yarn kit you should get it soon uh, and if you don't there's a um, customer service number you can you can call here's one of my waterfall this is like the start of what oh I forgot to bring my squares too oh, I'm like having a crazy day today 
so I did a couple squares, but I forgot to show you them, but we're gonna do it um, here, okay? So this is the start of it. So what you do is you make these like chain spaces and then you work the waterfall into the chain spaces, okay? So let's, here's another one I started. See how the chain spaces are different? They're right here and right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little disorganized today, but look, here's the one I finished. This is the uh, the waterfall. So all I did was work these stitches into the chain spaces like this. See the blue, and same with the colored one. This is what it looks like with like a variegated yarn. There you go. So chain spaces, and then you work the waterfall right into it. Okay. So that's that. Let me flip my phone because this might take a little bit for me to show you and I don't want to keep you guys here all day. <laughs> Linda says, watching from Ontario, Canada. Yay. Okay. Here we go. Let's start this waterfall. So let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you have done waterfall before or uh, give me a heart if you haven't and you're excited to do it today. How about that? That, that just... That's just what I just came up with. <laughs> okay, here is the start of my one. I'm gonna show you, let's see, they're all broken down into squares. I'm gonna show you 18 and I'm gonna show you 11. So this one is number 11 and we just started with um, a square and then you just go by the instructions right oh okay good so I see some hearts that means we haven't seen this fun technique before it's pretty cool and Tyson from Newfoundland Canada hello hello I'm so happy to see you here so this is round let me see where I left off one two three four five six round six of square eleven so I'm gonna show you round seven so that way you can see how the like the setup rounds go. So these all these rounds are like the setup rounds where you do the chain spaces before we put the waterfall into it. And when you get to the corner, this is the, let me show you this because the instructions say this for all. The top here is the first half of the corner. See, so I worked the first half of the corner and then I worked all the way around around until I got here and now this is going to be the second half of the corner. So the first half and the second half of the corner will make up the corner. So you're going to start at the beginning and end it at the end of the round. So the end of the corner is just two double crochets. Okay and then to make it join you do a corner join and in this book the corner join is like this you chain one and then you double crochet into the top of the starting chain which is this third chain right here okay hopefully my phone is okay let me move this so it's not distracting so you see how I made the corner so it's a chain one and a double crochet and one, two, three, four, five, six. So now four, I'm gonna show you how to do the last round and then we'll do the waterfall because I want you to see how the rounds start and end. And all of the rounds pretty much start and end the same way with this corner join. Um, so in all of the squares, okay? So to start another round, you're just gonna chain up three, one, two, three, and that's gonna count as the first part of the corner and then you're gonna double crochet right into there and that's gonna count as the second part of the corner. So the start of the corner is facing up and the end of the corner is facing out, like um, horizontally. So vertically when you're working and horizontally and that will be the start and the end of the corner. I hope, hope that makes sense. And Lynn's here from Freehold. Hi, Lynn. And there's my friend Tamara. Thank you. She says it looks pretty. Okay, so now what we do for this square, and each of them is going to have different instructions. So you're going to just go through the, you know, the instructions, is we're going to double crochet in the next 10 double crochets. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Six, oops, 
seven, eight, nine, and 10, okay? So after we do the 10, we get to the chain space. So, and I forgot to mention the beginning. You need to use, for when we do the waterfall, you need to use a hook that's like this that can move around because we're gonna go down all the way, okay? So you can use one like this without a grip on it or one of these long ones. And I'll show you that when we get to the waterfall. So when we get to the chain space, you're just gonna chain two, just like you did in the previous rounds, and then work into each double crochet again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then for the corner, like I said, all the corners are pretty much the same. It's just double crochet, except for that starting corner. Uh, two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets. So all of the other corners are gonna be that. Two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. And that's true for the two squares that I worked. And I'm assuming that all the squares are pretty much work in that, that way. So once you get like the corners down, um, they're all very similar. And Francis says, I'm going to do the heart square in the ebook, probably in, oh good, oh good, good, yeah, so so you're talking about the waterfall ebook? Oh good, that would be fun. I, so Francis, make sure you um, post a picture after you finished it so we can see how it looks. And anybody else, if you do this waterfall, um, these waterfall squares or any other waterfall, I wanna see pictures because this is something that I didn't, really even know about it until I saw this ebook and I had to learn how to do it to show you guys. So it's very, uh, very unique type of crochet. Okay, so remember two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet in the corners. And we're just doing this all the way across. This is the last round on this square. And the square part is pretty easy. So this is the last round on this square. Um, and, and then on the, of the regular, like, like of the setup. And then after we do the setup, <clears throat> we work the waterfall into it. So you're just going right along with your double crochets, setting up, and the waterfall gets worked into the chain spaces. So that's two work my double crochets. So in the end, because you're working all of the waterfall, it ends up looking like a solid square. It doesn't have a lot of open space in it. So it's nice for a blanket. It's gonna be nice and um, like solid and warm. Okay, I think I have one more edge around. Absolutely new to me, love it. <laughs> from Kisses from Vienna, thank you. Kisses right back at you in Vienna. Okay, so here's my corner. Where can you get the ebook, Shelly says. Hey, Shelly. Um, the ebook is in the link right in the description here. And it's over on Annie's, of course. So you can get the ebook, which is the digital download, which is what I have, or I believe you can get uh, the print copy too, but you know, then you have to wait for. Um, it to come in the mail. <laughs> so if you're like me, you don't like to wait for it to come in the mail. But I do like to have heart books though, actually. I have a lot of books in my stash. And see how my yarn is just um, working right through this little guy? It's just turning in there and not falling on me. <laughs> so that's good. Hey Joyce from Ohio and Sherry's here from South Dakota. Okay guys, we're almost to the end of this and then we're gonna get to the waterfall, but I just wanted you to kind of see what the setup looked like. And as you can see, the setup is simple. We're just working the same stitch basically all the way across, around I should say, 
and to the last. Now, remember what we said about the corners. So we started the corner here with a chain three and a double crochet. That was the start of the corner. Now we're this way and we're doing the end of the corner. So we're just gonna end with two double crochets. One and two. Like that. And then you chain one and work a double crochet to end up to end that corner. Just like that. A double crochet into the top of the first chain three. How does it measure at the end? Um, well, this one measures pretty, this one's pretty big. I don't, I don't know what it says in the book. See, this one I used a premier worsted weight and as you can see, it's pretty big. So I think it's probably just gonna depend on the yarn you use. I believe um, the book recommends Red Heart with Love because you've got a lot of color choices there. So, you know, it kind of just depends on your, your hook and your yarn. But it seems, this one's pretty big. This one turned out pretty big. So if you do all of 20 of them, you're gonna have a nice size blanket. I don't know what the actual dimensions of the blanket are. And Francis says, I like the corner joint. And Corinne says, why is it called waterfall? Okay, I'm gonna show you right now why it's called waterfall. Let me just make sure I'm on the right track with my instructions that was round seven okay now we're going to join the new color so we're just going to fasten off this color and i've been doing the like the yarn over like that because we're going to work over it so i don't mind that little knot up there and i want it to stay secure i'm going to add this white color here this one that i'm using today is the premier anti-pilling So, but any worse to weight yarn I think will do well for this. Okay, now we're gonna work a double crochet join. And I've done that before, so you guys can see. You just make your slip knot, put it on the hook. Now this is where you might need to use the larger long hook like this, but I think I got away with using this smaller one. So either way, as long as um, you don't have like a grip or something on it end. Okay, so you're gonna start your join. Remember I said this is the end of it and this is the start of it. So we're going to start at the start. <laughs> we're going to work into the starting corner, not the ending corner. So you just yarn over, cinch onto that, and then insert your hook. Don't work into here, work over here. Yarn over, pull through two, and then pull through two. And that is my starting double crochet. And then we're gonna work another double crochet. So that's the start of my corner, and then at the end, we'll do the end of the corner. Lisa says, hi from Michigan, hi Lisa. Okay, so first half of corner, and then we're gonna double crochet in the next 12. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And here's where the waterfall comes in. So when you get to your chain spaces, which I've already made this set up with all my chain spaces, this is how the rows are labeled. So this is the first row. So this is number one, right? And then this is two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then down here is the stitch. And it's um, eight, okay? So it will say uh, W, this is the stitch, okay? So it will say W, seven, stitch. So that means waterfall, which is what we're gonna do. And then you're gonna do the waterfall into these seven spaces, and then the eighth is the stitch, because we're working into a stitch. So you're gonna see in the instructions, W7 stitch. If you're working into a chain, it would say W7 chain. So this is how you do it. You start with 
a yarn over because these are all going to be double crochets and then you're going to insert your hook into the chain space yarn over twice one two okay come back into the next chain space and then you're gonna go into the next one, yarn over twice. Bring your hook back. So you're working over these chain spaces, yarn over twice. See how my hook's going down like this? Into the next one, yarn over twice. Into the last one, yarn over twice. And then at the last, we're gonna go into the stitch this is the stitch right here the first stitch we're going to do this in all three so you're going to insert your hook into that stitch and then we're going to work the all these loops off the hook and let me start it over because see this one's in the front i don't think that's right but that's okay because you're probably going to need to see this a few times to get it So you start with one yarn over and then when you go into each, each chain space, you do two yarn overs. So here's one yarn over, go into there, yarn over twice, go into the next one, yarn over twice, into the next one, yarn over twice. into the next one, yarn over twice, twice, see I'm just going into each of the chain spaces, into the next one, yarn over twice, and then I go into the stitch. Now once you go into the stitch, you're going to turn your work so you're working the loops off the back. Okay, so here's what the back is going to look like. See, I have one, um, one, one stitch going over all of those chain spaces. So you're going to yarn over, work off the stitch, and then yarn over, work through two loops. Yarn over, work through two loops and the chain. Okay, so go through the chain, work through two loops, oops, I lost my loop, ah, yarn over twice, this takes some getting used to. Yarn over twice, okay, into the stitch. Once you get into the stitch, turn your work so you work in the back. Okay, go through the stitch, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and the chain. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and the chain. Pull through two, pull through two, and the chain. Pull through two, pull through two, and the chain. And then you just do that all the way up until you get to the last, should be three on your hook, then you yarn over and pull through to make the double crochet. And I ended up with too many, but we're gonna do it um, again. So then you're just gonna push this over because we have to do this three times, okay? Because see here, there's three stitches here. One, two, three, and we're gonna work into all three of those. Would a small afghan be easier to hold? Yeah, but it would probably have to be really small because once you start going like really far down, then you really have to hold all of those loops. And that's what's hard is to keep all of those loops on the hook. So I think doing these squares, um, you know, as long as you're not going down too many more stitches, that's probably the limit, I'm not sure. Hi, Susan. <laughs> okay, so let's try this again because we have to do this three times for each uh, of the chain spaces. So we're gonna yarn over once, go through, 
yarn over twice. Go through, yarn over twice. Go through, yarn over twice. And then just keep going down each chain space, yarning over twice until you get to the stitch, which is right here. And then you insert your hook into the top of the stitch. Now you see you should have all these loops on your hook like this and then turn it around. Daisy says, wow, this is interesting. It is, isn't it? I just learned it. <laughs> it's, it's tricky to get used to, but it's not too bad once you get used to it. But this definitely took me some getting used to. Okay, so now we're gonna work off those loops from the back of the work. Now we're in the stitch right here, right? So we yarn over and just work through the stitch. The next step is to yarn over and work, through work off two loops like that. And then you're gonna yarn over and work off two loops and the chain, which is right there. So two loops and the chain. Don't forget to work off the chain. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two, and the chain. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two, and the chain. And just repeat that all the way to the top. And once you get to the top, pull through two, and then we pull through two and the chain. At the end, you should have three loops on your hook if you did it right. So this time I did it right, so see I have three loops on my hook and that's kind of like just the last double crochet. So then you just pull through two and then pull through two and that's your last double crochet at the top. It looks like whatever going over, it looks like, oh yes, Fran says it looks like water going over the top. Yeah, so it just falls like a waterfall. Okay, let's try this again. So we're going to do it three times. And then you see this is the one we're working on now where we have the waterfall here, here, and here. And there's all these are, the, I picked kind of the simple ones so that way I can uh, show you, but they have some really unique um, designs. Like Fran said, there's one that looks like hearts um, and there's one that looks like little trees. It's really cool. Okay, so yarn over, insert into that first chain, uh, yarn over twice, okay? Then you're gonna go into the next one, yarn over twice. And just keep going down, yarning over twice, through each one. It might be easier if you use one of these long double-ended hooks. I just, you know, I'm real uh, picky about my Susan Bates, so I feel more comfortable using those. Okay, and this is what it should look like. This one looks good. I did this one nice. <laughs> so now we're, you see we're at the end, so we're gonna go into the stitch. So this is the waterfall seven stitch. When it says stitch at the end, that means it's gonna anchor to the stitch as opposed to anchoring to a chain, which some of the instructions you anchor to a chain and some of them you anchor to the stitch. So you're gonna go right into the stitch to anchor it. Once you get into the stitch, you turn your work. And Vanessa says, why from the back? And it's the only way to see what you're doing when you're working the, the loops off your hook. Um, if you try to do it from the front, it, you, you won't, it just doesn't work. I mean, I, I guess you could try, but <laughs> the instructions say to do it from the back and I can't see it working from the front. So, so you're going to yarn over, pull through the stitch first. Okay. Then yarn over, pull through two loops. Then you yarn over and pull through two loops and the chain. So you're working over the chains. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two loops and the chain. Yarn over, pull through two, two loops and the chain. Can you see what I'm doing okay, hopefully? Two loops and the chain. See how I'm working the chain into it? Pull through two, two loops and the chain. Pull through two two loops and the chain. And that's basically working the double crochet stitches 
around or over those chains. And now you should have three left. That's when you can turn it back to the front and work your last double crochet. So yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And that is what it looks like. And then you just continue. You don't have to change your yarn or anything. You just continue across until you get to the next chain space. And Vanessa says, where can I find the pattern? Uh, you can see quite clear. Oh, good, Patricia, thank you. Uh, the pattern is in the description. So if you just go to the description um, from the start of this video, there's a link to the um, pattern booklet. You can get, I believe you can get a hard copy or the digital copy, which is what I have. And um, the link to, that, to the little yarn that I was using is in there too. Okay, so we put the links in today. And now we're just going to work across with our color. We did our corners like we did before. I'm going to do a couple more uh, just in case anybody popped on a little um, in the middle of it or whatever. So I'm going to do a few more. So you just work around. And it's, this is really easy because you do the setup first, which is basically all of the chain spaces and the double crochets. And then at the end, you do the water call, the waterfall. Um, and you can use, you know, the colors, the color um, choices are really limitless. You can do a lot with these fun colors. And the booklet tells you, uh, you know, lots of tips and tricks about working the corners, about changing colors and things like that. So you have everything you need in the, in the booklet. Okay, so now here we are at another set of chains, chain spaces. And, and the, then it'll say waterfall seven stitch. So we're gonna do into the seven and then we're gonna anchor to the stitch. So you're gonna yarn over, insert, yarn over twice. Bring it back to the front. Yarn over, insert, yarn over twice. Bring it back to the front. Insert, yarn over twice. Keep all those loops on your hook. So you have to sort of push it down so you're keeping all those loops on your hook. Um, and it has to be not tight, but it has you have to have some tension on there because if it's too loose, you're gonna have trouble working those loops off later, they're gonna like sort of fall off your hook. So yarn over twice, yarn over twice, and then I'm into my first stitch. So don't go into this one or this one, go into the first one, because we're gonna do the same thing for these two stitches. And then you're just gonna insert right into the top of that hook. Turn over so you're working on the back. Carol says, thank you for teaching this new stitch. You're welcome, it was new to me too. Um, so that's why I was a little disorganized today. <laughs> it took me some time to get used to this, but I think I got it. So if I can get it, you guys can get it for sure. All right, so we're gonna yarn over and then the fir first we're gonna work off the stitch, right? Cause we're in that, that first stitch. So work off that stitch. And then you just follow the same pattern, which is yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two, and the chain. Don't forget to go through the chain, like that. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two, and the chain. So you can see why it would need to be, have some tension on there and not, not have it be really loose. All these, with all these loops working, they have to be, you know, tensioned on there, or they're just gonna fall. So yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and through the chain. Pull through two, pull through two, and through the chain. Pull through two, pull through two, and the chain. Pull through two, pull through two, and the chain. And when you work off the last chain, you should end up with three loops on your hook and that's going to create our very last double crochet for the top. So we just yarn over, yarn over for the double crochet. So now how you see how it's all over in the middle, you just have to push those stitches over to the side so we can work the other two into there.
Rafi says you explain it very well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so yarn over, and we're gonna insert, yarn over twice. I'm just gonna do this last one for anyone who uh, popped in late or wants to see it again and again, because it does take some getting used to. So come back through, go over the, the, the chain space, yarn over twice. And remember to yarn over twice. That's what, um, in, the, in the beginning, I was only yarning over once, and I was like, this is something not working. So remember, when you go over that chain and into that chain space, you yarn over twice, because these are like double crochets. Because we have to have the height of a double crochet, because these are all double crochet rounds. Yarn over twice. Into the last one, yarn over twice. And then we have no more chain spaces, but we have our next stitch. So you're just gonna go right into the top of that stitch and then turn and start working on the back. Okay, first we work off the stitch. So that's the stitch. And then we do the same thing. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and the chain. So as you can see, it's gonna get repetitive when you're doing the same thing. Just remember, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and the chain. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and the chain. Pull through two, pull through two, and the chain. We're almost at the end. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two and the chain, and there we go. We've got three loops at the end to work our last double crochet. Ta-da! Scooch these guys over, then you'll work that third one. So see, it works out perfectly. You've got three stitches down here. You're gonna work into each of those three stitches. And then you will end up with this pretty waterfall square. Um, Wendy said, Stella said, very interesting. And Wendy said, holy cow, I almost missed this also. So glad I didn't. I have never seen this before. Thanks for showing us. Yeah, you're welcome, Wendy. I know, because I don't think I could have understand just reading the pattern. It took me some time, let me tell you. I was up kind of late last night trying to uh, to work this out so I could teach you guys how to do it. It, it is a little hard with, the, with only the written. The written instructions are great, but as you know, sometimes it's way easier just to see somebody do it. So I'm glad you were able to uh, see this video. And now, of course, we, we're going to have it in the Facebook videos forever and ever. So you can always refer back to it if you decide you want to make these squares. So this is the one uh, we just did. And then this is the other one. But you know there's 20, so I only really showed you one. This is the other one. And as you can see, I did the waterfall here with two and here. So this would have been one waterfall, it would have said W4, so one, two, three, four, and then stitch, because we anchored it to the stitch. And then you work the corner, and then the same thing, you do W4 stitch twice. There are a few of the squares that it says W4 chain, and then um, that's basically the same as what I showed you, but you, you anchor it to a chain space rather than anchoring it directly to a stitch. And that's based, that is the basic of the whole entire uh, pattern book. And just remember the corners too. When I was doing the corners, I wanted to just chain three and join, but you don't do that. You do the chain one and double crochet. That's, the, that's what the corner join is. So make sure you do the corner join uh, correctly, okay? And Francis says, it's amazing. Everyone send some hearts up for Liz. Thanks, Francis. <laughs> and Tamara says, uh, I can't wait to watch this. It's so nice. And someone who I don't want to uh, mess up your name said, thank you so much. Just stumbled on this as I got home from work. Good. Well, you can uh, watch the beginning too if you missed the beginning. And we went over it a few times. So this is a, yay, I'm getting hearts. And Daisy says, I can't remember the last time. <laughs> Thanks, Daisy. That's so sweet. You guys are awesome. And Pat says, uh, very cool. Francis says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, everyone. Oh, well, I guess everyone liked it. Let me just flip my phone here 
to say goodbye to everyone. Whew, excuse me, I, I always get kind of tired at the <laughs> end of these. <laughs> it takes a lot out of me. But thank you so much for watching, and I'm so glad everybody loved this. And remember, you can just go over to Facebook and watch it again and again um, if you need an, a little refresher on this waterfall. If you want to get the booklet, uh, click on the link in the description. If you want to get my cool little yarn buddy here, the yarn it, uh, so your yarn doesn't go rolling all over the place, We've got the link for that too. So everyone, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I hope I will see you again next week, which will be um, July, I think 30th or something, Friday. So that's gonna be the last one before the block party. So remember, after that, we're gonna do um, July, August. On the first Friday in August, we're gonna do another block party. So I hope you join me for that one too. Okay, everyone, have a great weekend. Thanks again, I'll see you soon, bye.